Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial on shaders and the Godot engine. Um, this time I'm going to talk about how to texture a large terrain using a technique called splat maps. Um, so the purpose is not to teach you about splat maps, I would advise you if you want to learn more about it to search the internet and other tutorials. My purpose here is to bridge the gap between these techniques and their uh, implementation in the Godot engine. All right. Having said that, I'm still going to do a very short um, introduction to why would you want to use a splat map. So let's consider this um, problem. I have, and I made this video, you might have seen it before. I have this large terrain, and I want to texture this terrain using a mixture of different textures. So uh, usually, and if you don't have, um, if you didn't know before about splat maps, what you, you would probably do is you would create a large texture to fit the whole terrain, and then you would, either in a program like Blender or Photoshop, you would paint the different textures in the different parts of the terrain. Now, this creates two different problems. One problem is that if for some reason you change the way your, uh, let's say, your grass looks, then you'd have to change all that texture again so that the grass is updated. Um, and this is not the biggest problem. I think the biggest problem is that when you want to apply a texture to a large terrain, you need a freaking huge large texture if you don't want to lose detail. And even then, you will lose a lot of detail. As you can see from this example here, my terrain is not that big, uh, just slightly big. Um, and if I would use just one texture to do this, it would have been enormous. I mean, in terms of performance, it would be crazy. Okay, so you just don't do that kind of stuff. And the splat maps allow me to actually have a lot of detail without using these big textures. As you can see, I can actually zoom in very, very close to the ground without losing detail and I can zoom in on the grass and the detail is still quite good when I zoom in closely, right? Only when I'm really, really, really close you start to blur out. But overall it's really fine detail. You cannot get this kind of detail in a large texture for a terrain of this size or, or bigger, right? So there uh, the solution is to use splat maps, okay? So a splat map is like um, an index table where you're telling uh, the shader what kind of texture uh, should he use in each pixel of the terrain. So the splat map texture itself can be quite small considering the size of the terrain, but then you'd have separate textures for each of your, let's say, materials. So I have my grass texture, my rock texture, my sand texture in this example here, and I'm telling the shader which one to use uh, using this splat map texture, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, where is it? Like this. Okay, so this is basically a splat map. It's telling me that the green areas are grass, the red are the rocks, and the blue are the sand parts, right? And, and I can do all this blending between one another. I can even add details like this using brushes. You see this kind of pattern here? I can show you how it looks inside the terrain. If I'm able to find it, I think it's on this side. Yeah, it's here. So you can see it here. It's quite a, quite a good detail. You can see the blending of the, um, of the grass and the sand. So I can create all these kind of inter interesting blendings. You see here the rock being blended into the grass. And this texture, amazingly, is just using 512 pixels, all right? So in 512 pixels, I'm texturing this whole terrain using all this detail. So this is why a splat map is so great. So let me just close this for now. How does a splat map work? Basically, um, I'm going to pick up each pixel of the, of the, um, f uh, the splat map and I'm going to analyze the channel. So each pixel has four channels, the red, green, and blue, and the alpha channel, which means that an alpha uh, splat map of this kind can be used with up to four textures. So in my example, I'm only using three, 
which is usually quite enough for texturing a terrain. You can use up to four. There are other ways of doing splat maps where you can add more textures to it. But for this example, this is going to be enough, right? So again, just using 512 pixels is good enough to make all these kind of small details that look really good uh, in the terrain itself. So let's see how to do this uh, in Godot Engine. So I set up a small project here where I have uh, exactly the same terrain. And now we are going to create the shader for uh, implementing the splat map. I've downloaded these textures from texture.com, just a few examples. They are tileable, although not very good, but for the sake of demonstration, they are enough. And I have my paint uh, splat map texture, which for now is just black. So let's begin. I'm going to add a material, a shader material, and I'm going to use a material shader. Now, in my previous tutorials, I've been using the shader graph, the visual graph editor. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the code because even though this shader is really, really simple, in the shader graph, it will get quite complex because of the visual complexity of connecting things. You see that in code, this takes like six lines, it's really, really easy. But the visual shader graph in Godot is also a bit limited at the moment and a bit buggy. So I think the code is really good and it's also great to learn how to understand shaders a little bit better. So we are going to start by creating our textures. We need a grass texture. We need a rock and the dirt or sand, let's call it. And we need the splat map, All right? We need this tree. In the end, uh, we are going to change the diffuse of the of this uh, material. So basically, diffuse is the color that the material emits uh, or or reflects the light. Um, and we're going to uh, attribute to this diffuse. Let's call it like uh, our result. Okay, result is going to be a color, a vector three. Actually, color is a vector four, but we don't care for alpha right now. So vector three is enough. And as you can see, there are no errors. So the shader is working and everything is black as it should. So what we need to do now, this result, I'm going to build the, the shader from, from the end to the start because maybe I think it's a little bit easier. Also make sure you are in the fragment shader, not the vertex shader. We are doing this per pixel, so fragment shader. So our result is going to be the sum of all the grass, all the rock, and all the dirt, right? So I'm going to have more um, more variables. Let's call them the grass color, the rock color, and the dirt color. So in the end, I'm going just to sum up everything and I have the button. okay grass rock color color okay so my grass color is going to be I'm going to get the oh before that let me just assign the texture so we can see the stuff happening as we code so I'm going to load my grass my rock my dirt and the splat map. Okay. Right. Also to so that we can see if this is working or not, let's just make something very, very fast here. So I'm going to start like full grass. So green is gonna be my grass because G grass. And I'm going to use red for rocks. So red full. Let's see how we do some rocks like this. This is just a test and then a uh, blue for the dirt. Okay, so I'm not going to use the alpha map, the alpha channel. Let me save it. Okay, and Godo is going to load it. Yeah, okay, so it's already here. Perfect. So my grass is going to be, we're going to get the texture information from my grass texture at 
the current UV and we get the RGB value. Now when we use the text, the text sorry, um, it, it gets the color information. So color is a factor 4 because it has the alpha. We want just the RGB so I'm just going to I'm just going to tell them to get the three first elements of this, uh, of this array. Now I'm going to do the same for, as you can see the grass is already here, so I have full grass and then I'm going to do the same for the rock. And then the dirt. So now it's going to start uh, looking a bit strange. What's happening here is that it's summing up everything. So I'm just summing up all the grass, all the rock and all the dirt. So I'm getting very high values in all channels. That's why it is messed up because I'm not filtering using the splat map. So now we need to read the splat map. So let's create more variables. For the grass I'm going to call it uh, grass value for example. And this is going to be, let's get texture information again, but this time from the splat map at UV and I want the grass value, it means the um, green, right? So this will be G. Okay, then I'm going to do the same for the rock and the dirt. My rock is the red and my dirt is the blue. Okay, so now what I need to do is the color of the grass is not going to be directly the color that's coming from the grass texture but I'm going to multiply it by the grass value and then I'm going to do the same with the rock value and the dirt value and there you go here's our splat map okay this is very very simple and this is how you implement a splat map in Godot now this is, doesn't look exactly the same as my, as my previous demo did because I did some extra changes. As you can see right now, for, for instance, if you, if you zoom in on this, you can see that the texture is not that great, the definition is not that good. Even without zooming in a lot, you can see already quite a lot of blurring happening. <coughs> so this is because the texture size and the way the texture is being applied uh, is, is like a default, so he's not resizing it in any way. So what I would want to do here is to resize this, uh, these textures so that the grass is quite smaller that allows me to zoom in and still see uh, detail. I could do the same with the rock because this is quite big, I could uh, shrink it a lot and even with this one also. So this looks like a sand which is already zoomed in instead of uh, a zoomed out view. So I need to uh, take in consideration the size of the textures and, and the size that I want them to, to be applied when using the splat map. So for that let's create uh, a bit more um, some helper variables that will allow us to tweak these parameters. Okay, So I'm going to call them let's say grass resolution which will have a default value of 1 so without any change and then I'll use the rock resolution and the dirt resolution. I'm using uniform just to allow these values to be edited outside the shader code so you can apply the same shader to different objects and you can tweak these parameters individually. Okay, So you can even animate them in your code or the editor. So now I want to, this is like a, a resolution or like a scale, you can think of this as a scale and I want to apply this scale to the texture itself, not to the splat map the splat map is just giving me the coordinates of where the grass is but to the, to the UVs of the grass, rock and dirt. So I'm going to multiply this by the grass resolution, multiply the UV by the rock resolution and here by the dirt resolution. Okay, so now let's hide that so we can see in, in a bigger view. I can, I'll close up the view a little bit. And now if I'm going to my shader, I can see my parameters here. And I'm going to increment the grass resolution to let's say 10. Now take a look at what's going to happen in the screen. You see, it's 10 times smaller. Because I've multiplied the UVs by 10, so now it can fit 10 times more grass in the same space. 
So now I can zoom in and I can see a lot more uh, more quality, more detail in this grass and I can even add this to 20 alright so you can see a lot of nice details then the rock I could maybe put 10 you can see the texture is not so good, it tiles a lot it's not a very good texture but anyway just for demonstration purposes it's fine and then the sand also maybe 15 whoa this is terrible, maybe 5 yeah, it's not, this is not even tileable anyway. Anyway, for, for demonstration, it's fine. So, very easy. I think you, you could follow this uh, quite easily. I would, I'm going to wrap up this code and these images and put a zip file with all this project for you to download together with the post of this tutorial. So you, if you want to play a little bit and do your own experiments, feel free to do so. If there's anything you didn't understand, please just comment or ask. I'll be glad uh, to explain it again. And you can you can use these splat maps for more than just texturing uh, the terrain. You can use more than one splat splat map per terrain. And one idea is also to use a splat map, uh, an extra splat map, for adding more information to the way the shader should uh, display this terrain. For instance, you can have an extra splat map where the red channel is. Uh, has information for the ambient occlusion, the green channel has information for the specular intensity, etc, etc. So in just one texture, one small texture, you can code a lot of information instead of using all these texture maps. Okay, so there are a lot of advantages in using splat maps, not only for performance, but even for practical reasons. And they are very, very simple to implement in Godot. You can do this uh, exactly the same in the visual shader editor. It will be just a little bit more work, but this can be also quite an interesting exercise for you to try on. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.